How's it going you awesome bunch of bakers? Hope you're in a fine day so far. Welcome back to another video. Today we're finishing off the year with some rough puff pastry apple pies. So let's get in the kitchen and check them out. As with my previous rough puff pastry recipe, this one is quite sweet even though it does not contain a lot of sugar. The pastry itself is sugar free, the apple filling is more tart than sweet and does not contain a lot of sugar and the sugary coating on top it's just a light sprinkle. I'm letting the spiced apple filling do the talking in this recipe. The pastry is there to provide a nice flaky texture. Rough puff pastry is just so versatile. You can use it both in sweet and savory applications. And you can find a good few examples of it on my channel. But before you check those out, let me show you how these apple pies are made. Starting with the ingredients. We'll need some white bread flour, cold butter that's cut into one inch cubes, a little bit of salt and some cold water. The butter and the water must be cold, so keep them in the fridge until you are ready to make the pastry. And that is the only way to make pastry. If your butter and your water are warm, you'll be making dough, and that is definitely not going to be flaky. For the filling, we'll need some Bramley apples. I believe these are called Granny Smith apples in the US. We'll need an egg for glazing and making the pastry stick together. We'll need some sugar, but a lot less than I have in that bowl here. For the spice mix, we'll need some cinnamon, mixed spice, ginger, cardamom, and nutmeg. You can use allspice instead of mixed spice if you want. As for the equipment, we'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a brush, a fork, a rolling pin, and a pan for cooking the filling in. If you're going to grind your own cardamom, then you'll need something to grind it with. I'm going to use my pestle and mortar for that. You can of course just use pre-ground spices. When it comes to grinding cardamom, here's how I like to do it. First, I place it in the mortar and bash it out with a pestle to crack open the shells. I pick the shells out and then grind the cardamom seeds to a fine powder. A brush is the best tool for removing spice powders from the mortar, so that's what I'm using. It was like it was made for it. Okay, the cardamom's ground up, now I can make the spiced sugar. And all there is to it is mixing the sugar with the spices. And here you can adjust the recipe to your taste. Adjust the amounts to emphasize the flavor of a certain spice. Take a spice out or add another one in or just replace them all with something else. I like the balance of this spice mix. The cinnamon takes center stage, while the ginger, cardamom, mixed spice and nutmeg add a nice flavor in the background. Okay, with the spice sugar mixed, let's move on to prepping the apples, or just one apple in my case. This thing was huge. Okay, what you wanna do is peel it, then cut two sides off, and then cut the two remaining sides off to remove the core. After that, slice the pieces and then finally dice them. They don't need to be very big or very small. One centimeter or slightly less than half an inch cubes will be perfect. Now I'll drop the diced apple in a cooking pan and then add some of the sugar. The sugar to apple ratio here is one to eight. One part sugar, eight parts apple. Now place the pot on high heat on the cooker and cook it for around five minutes. We don't want the apple to break down completely. You want a consistency where it's basically half jam, half apple pieces. The mix should be thick and chunky. And this is what it should look like. This took no more than 5 minutes on high heat. Okay, transfer the apples to a bowl, leave them to cool down completely, and then refrigerate until needed. And whilst the apples are cooling, let's move on to making the pastry. In a large bowl, combine the flour and the salt and give it a quick mix. Then add the butter cubes and coat them in flour. What follows is extremely important. We don't have to crumble the butter into the flour. This is not biscuit dough. The butter must remain nice and chunky. So instead of crumbling, you're gonna pick up each piece of butter and break it into four or five pieces and no more. Each piece of butter should not be handled more than once. As you break the butter up, keep coating it in flour. Once all the butter is broken and coated, you can add the final ingredient, the cold water. Now grab your dough scraper and start mixing. And then continue on by hand. We're not trying to knead this dough. Instead, try to press it and squish it together until there's no dry flour left. There may be some dry floury bits, but that's totally fine. At first, the dough will look a little bit rough and uneven, but don't worry about that, it's normal. That's exactly how it should be. Before we start rolling this dough out and folding it up to turn it into a pastry, we need to cool it down. That'll make our life a lot easier. So wrap the dough up in some cling film and pop it in the fridge for around 40 minutes. You can of course leave it in there for longer, but 40 minutes is about minimum. Once the time's up, pull the dough out of the fridge, take it out of the cling film, dust it generously with flour and start rolling it out. You want to roll it to about three times its length. And again, it's going to be a little bit uneven, a little bit rough around the edges. Don't worry about that. Just even it out as much as you can. Once you're happy with the length, turn the dough horizontally in front of you. And then fold it up in three layers. Keep the folded up dough in the same orientation. 
because now we need to roll it out once again in the direction of the two open ends. Roll it to about double its length and now perform the same type of fold as previously, folding it up into three layers. So we've gone from a dough with no layers to a pastry with nine layers, but we're not already yet. We need a few more layers for this to be nice and flaky. So once again, wrap it up in cling film and pop it back into the fridge for another 40 minutes of chilling. During this time the gluten will relax and make it easier for us to roll it out again. And the second set of folds is exactly the same as the first. Roll the pastry in the direction of the two open ends, get it to about three times its length, then fold it up into three layers and repeat one more time. And now it just needs to be chilled down one more time for 40 minutes before we can use it. Just before the timer runs out, start preheating your oven. 180 degrees Celsius, fan on, that's 355 Fahrenheit. Okay, it's been around 40 minutes, we can move on to the final shaping. Remove the pastry from the fridge, dust it generously with flour, and then roll it out to a large rectangle, measuring slightly more than 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters or 16 by 8 inches. You want it to be slightly larger because we need to trim the edges off. We need to cut this pastry into 12 squares measuring 10 by 10 centimeters or 4 by 4 inches and that will give us 6 bottoms and 6 tops for our pies. If you're going to double this recipe, I would suggest making two separate batches of pastry instead of one large one. If this was double the size, it would be much harder to work with. When it comes to cutting and trimming, a pizza cutter is the best tool for the job. But if you don't have one, just use a knife. But don't ruin your table, use a chopping board or something. Okay, once everything's trimmed and divided, take the egg and brush six of the squares with it and then distribute the apple filling evenly between all of them. Start with a big tablespoon on each and then divide the rest. Now place a pastry square over the filling to seal it in. And this will be a little bit tricky because there's quite a lot of filling here. So don't squish it, just lay the pastry gently on top of the filling and then gently press the edges down and make sure the corners meet up. There are various ways you could crimp the edge together. You could fold it over, you could press it together with your fingers to give it a certain shape or just use the old classic the fork. Go around all the edges and then finally, if you're feeling fancy, you could trim them up to make them nice and uniform and that's where the pizza cutter will come in handy again. Once you're done, place your pies on a non-stick paper lined baking tray and brush them with egg. We're not going to bake them right away for two reasons. First, the filling is quite wet and the pastry contains a lot of butter so to ensure that the pies keep their shape, we'll chill them down before we bake them. And that'll give us a chance to brush them with egg one more time, which will make the glaze extra rich. So don't cover the pies, place them in the fridge, chill them down for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, pull them out of the fridge and brush them with egg one more time. Then use a small knife to create a little vent hole in the middle of each pie. This is just insurance, it'll prevent them from blowing up as they bake. And last but not least, sprinkle them with some spiced sugar, if you want to. You can of course leave them plain with just a the glaze, they'll be beautiful like that too. Okay, now these bad boys are ready for the oven, so let's get them in there. They'll take around 25 minutes to fully bake. A quick note on the amount of spiced sugar that I made, it's about double of what I used. So if you're going to double the recipe, do not double the spiced sugar recipe. The reason why there's so much of it is because some of the spices weigh in at only 1 gram. Okay, these things look ready, they have puffed up, they look nice and brown, and my kitchen smells amazing. All there is to do now is leave them to cool down a bit and then tuck in. You don't want to be biting into a hot apple pie, it'll ruin your day and the roof of your mouth. But let's just appreciate this beauty. The pastry is light and flaky and the filling is slightly sweet, tart and full of fragrant spice. And if you have already tried some of my other rough puff pastry recipes, then there's no good reason to not try this one too. So what do you think this recipe? Have you ever tried any of my other rough puff pastry recipes? Let me know down in the comments. You want to see more of those like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.